Hello and welcome to Cornwall. My name is Andy Paramore and this is Andy's Cornish Creations. In this video we're going to be making a little fridge magnet in the shape of a fish. Here I've got two pieces of uh, one piece of paddock and a piece of oak and I'm hot gluing them together. They're both the same dimensions uh, so they fit between centers on the lathe. Just hold them together, wait for the glue to go off. Okay, I've got it between centers, and here I've just shown you because I haven't got a um, ring and center point live revolving tailstock center, I'm having to use a normal um, revolving tailstock center. And it, if I were to push that into the wood, it would split the two pieces apart. So I've put a little um, uh, washer um, on the end so that it will only go into the wood uh, a certain amount and not split the two pieces apart. And uh, here I'm just turning it to round with a uh, 3 8 inch uh, spindle gouge. Two and a half inch a little bit over three quarters of an inch, but you can make it whatever you like. The diameter is an inch and a half. Again, it can vary depending on the whatever wood you've got. Turning at 1200. <clears throat> this is the mouth of the uh, of the fish, the front end, if you like. And this is where the tail starts. Okay, so here I'm just creating the shape of the fish with a uh, 3 8 inch spindle gouge. Just taking the, uh, the end nearest the chuck down with the uh, parting tool. I don't like getting the spindle gouge too close to the jaws of the chuck in case it catches it. Taking the diameter of the tail down a little bit. Yeah, I'm just scooping out the tail hollowing this bit out so that when I get, do go to um, put it on the um, on the bench sander when I uh, when I sand it down which you'll see later uh, it leaves that uh, shape at the shape at the bottom Uh, on a couple of videos ago someone asked me about my uh, modified parting tool and uh, I'm just going to give you a, a close-up of it. Uh, it's just a thin parting tool and uh, instead of having a flat on the end I've just rounded it off slightly. I don't know whether you can see that, it's difficult to see, but it's just rounded uh, and it's a 
well, I don't know what the profile is, it's about 60 degrees I suppose on those two sides. I haven't got any special grinds on it or anything, you can see it's all a bit rough but, um, but I'll show you how it works. And what I like it for is somewhere like this, if I was, I could go with the, um, with the skew chisel and, um, where are we, here we go, with the skew and I could get it in nice and tight there but it would create almost too tight a point in there that's quite difficult to, uh, to sand. Uh, whereas I think with this, well, I tend to find that it leaves a, a slightly rounded bottom in there but it's still, it, it's still enough of a point to, uh, to, to separate the two pieces. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you, sh I'll show you what I mean. And it, it, it's, it's acting as a scraper. I can just go in. There's little or no danger of getting any catches or anything, and it just leaves me with a, a nicely rounded bottom. And once I get the sandpaper in there, it just uh, finishes it off nicely. Right, I'll just use the skew to take off any sort of humps and bumps just to even it out enough for sanding. I'm not worried about this end just yet because I'm I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to pop this end into the uh, into the chuck so I can finish off the the front but we need to sand that off. I'll start off at uh, 120 grit sandpaper and go right down to a 400 grit Then I've got my abrasive paste, put some of that on, put it on to lower speed, about 500, and then speed it up to about 1000 so, to uh, work it in. And then I'm using some pale French polish, and that uh, generally, on a, especially on the smaller pieces, does leave a really nice shine. very light uh, touch. If you press on too much it tends to drag. Uh, but a really light touch and it leaves a, a, a nice finish. see it's got a really nice shine on it. I just popped a bit of non-slip fabric around the tail end as I put it in the, into the jaws just to uh, 
help to, for it to not slip as much and also so it doesn't mark the piece. And then I centre it up with the uh, existing hole that's already in there and a very light um, pressure so it doesn't split the wood. And then finish the bottom off. I think I lose the uh, footage of the finishing the bottom off. That was my thin parting tool just to get it down. Yeah, I'm using the uh, rounded parting tool just to put a little mark in so I can burn a line in it. And it just just starts off and gives something gives a, a groove for the wire to fit into. At the end of the video, you can see I've uh, put a little bit of footage of where the uh, wire gets trapped. Uh, so uh, have a look at the end, and you'll be able to see uh, see when it goes wrong <laughs> but I'll not have it yet. I'll uh, have left the footage until the end and here's a little slow-mo of the smoke coming off <laughs> here I've got a, a very thin parting tool made out of a knife I'm just using the, the sharpness of the knife to split the wood apart because it's only hot glued together so it uh, comes apart quite easily And then over to the bench sander and just uh, sand down the tail. And there uh, you can see that uh, when I've hollowed it out, it just uh, for forms the scoop out on, on the tail, the hollowed bit. And then finish off on a drum sander. If you haven't got a drum sander, you could use a, a little file or. Uh, or oh, just a bit of sandpaper. And here's the other side, the other one that I've done, just finishing it off. The uh, Padouk one. Okay, so there we have it. A nice simple project. Um, just two pieces of timber, hot glued together, and uh, yeah, I was thinking sort of fridge magnet or something like that would be quite good, just drill a hole in the back and uh, hot glue a little, um, what they call them, rare earth magnets, whatever they call them, onto there, pop it on the fridge, um, yeah, nice. Nice little project, and uh, one there, that one's Paduk, and this one's a piece of oak. And uh, I did a, oh, as a practice, I did a couple of, a bit, bit fatter these ones. You can use any, any size, the body's about two inches, and this bit's about three quarters of an inch, the tail. Um, but any size off cuts that you've got, providing the two pieces match, and make them the same length so it fits between the uh, fits on the lathe nicely and uh, yeah really easy job really so hope you liked it if you did give it a thumbs up um, if you haven't already su subscribed if you could do that would be great and share and all those good things and um, and if you can leave a comment that would be nice um, Anyway, from, it's a bit chilly out here, it's getting, uh, it's getting on in the evening now, and uh, I have got a fire though, so it's not too bad. Uh, um, so from me, Andy Paramore, Andy's Cornish Creations, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. Stick around to the end, and uh, to see my little accident with the, uh, with the burning wire. 
I didn't get hurt, so it's okay. <laughs> And this is what not to do with the wire. You see it's flopping around a bit and because the two pieces of wood just there it gets caught in the joint and just whips it out of my hand and just wraps around the piece and, uh, and that's why you have to have uh, the little handles on the end and uh, certainly don't wrap it around your fingers otherwise you could, uh, that, something like that could easily take your finger off. Thank <laughs> you. 